Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode, I mainly want to try out the Swift again. I've updated a bunch of mods, including RP0, Remote Tech, FAR, Realism Overhaul itself, uh, Advanced Jet Engines, so all the stuff, and Real Fuels even. And so all of the, all of the normal mods, the essential mods, uh, seem to have had updates recently. And so I need to see whether all that's working quite right. When you update a bunch of mods, things might break. And so this is probably going to be a short episode where I once again try to launch for the moon. I need to fix up the Swift. And uh, we need to make sure that the, the maneuvering thrusters are correct. So yeah, let me edit the Swift. Now last time I... Uh, I, oh, I unlocked some of the buildings, the tracking station and uh, the mission control. So we'll see what effect that has on how I can plot for the moon. But the main thing is these thrusters need to be able to use nitrous oxide at... Uh, okay, well that's the max. So uh, 154 vacuum. Now somebody had asked on my live stream which was better, nitrous oxide or nitrogen. And it's definitely nitrous oxide. You get more thruster power and more ISP. So yeah, nitrous oxide. Okay. So I think that was the only critical edit I needed to do, right? Stuff sometimes for me to remember. Uh, everything else seemed to work properly. We got to orbit. Trajectory wasn't great. We need to flatten that out a little bit more this time. Uh, somebody in the comments mentioned that I could use fewer Ullage rockets on the Vanguard stage, but I want to be safe on that, so we'll keep it to there. Alright, uh, I think that about says it all, and we'll see how that works out. It looked like the spinning that we had on the final stage did not unsettle the fuel, so that, that rocket worked. Okay, let us save edits. Okay. So, well, uh, nothing crashed in the VAB, so, so far, updating seems to be okay. Let's warp to complete and see what I can do. Okay, the Swift one is on a launch pad, uh, but I'm, we're not necessarily in line. Oh, the tracking station updates are gonna take some time. Hmm, I forgot about that. I mean, uh, actually, our mission control update seems to have worked out for us already. But we don't have the tracking station update yet. Really sort of wanted that, but we can try it. We can try it uh, just uh, lining up with the moon. Yeah. Okay. I guess that'll work out. Okay. So another Swift is on its way, and we can launch. It looks like one mod that has been updated that I haven't updated in this install is... Uh, stock extensions, XS, SXT. So, yeah, just a little note on that. I don't know if that's going to cause any problems. It's just a part mod, but you never know. Okay, uh, and I'd really like to dump most of the parts in it. So, anyway, SAS is on, Thrall is up. I think I have dumped most of the parts in it. I'll have to double check for RAM space, obviously. Um, but we want to line up with the moon. I don't think we can target the moon yet, but in my experience, uh, longitude of ascending node close to zero tends to get us in the right place. I think that I'll, that I'll do here. Just just looking at where we really want is uh, to have the have the cape uh, located right where the moon has its peak. If you look at it like this, uh, right over there. So we want to Cape Canaveral on. Whoop, whoop, whoop close on this side here and that's that's about right I think so I'm just going to hold on gonna make sure that uh, hmm doesn't seem like we can pump power in doesn't seem like it's taking electric charge all right let's see I'm going to time warp oh uh, well it'll be a nighttime launch Okay, so longitude of ascending node at zero, which is probably close to the right place for it, and we will launch here. 
Could use some more electric charge, judging from last time. We don't have solar panels yet. Those are unlocking. I think uh, uh, Nathan Gell mentioned that there was uh, some in early probes. We uh, tried to unlock improved instrumentation to get other solar panels, but there is a solar panel in early probes. So we'll get that uh, close to when the tracking station unlocks. Okay. So uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, smart ASS ready. We'll try for a shallower ascent this time and ignition and launch. Going to execute and start this off. Okay, not wasting any time with the pitch. Well, that's the bottom end of the prograde vector. I don't want to get any flippies or anything like that. Pretty rare in realism overhaul with the gimbling of the engines, but uh, still best to be careful. Okay, booster set. Boosters are clear. Very good. We should be pretty safe at this point, uh, as far as the heating is concerned. Haven't even gotten heat effects, which is pretty remarkable. Alright, getting ready for separation. Okay, set. Ignition. Alright, the Vanguard has ignited. I do like the the effect of having these going like this. Okay, very good. And uh, we'll get this back on the job. Fairing separation. Probably could do with a little bit more pitch up uh, for the sake of the next stage, which will take five minutes. Okay, preparing for SEP, I'll uh, turn off Smart ASS again and go with SAS. Okay, SEP. Ignition. Alright, very good. Probably need a little bit more pitch here. We are still very much go for orbit on this stage. Well, gimbling, gimbling seems to be fine here. Might not have left enough time to apoapsis for this, we'll see. Okay, time to apoapsis is actually going up, so we'll pitch down now. We will try to hang out close to apoapsis here. Okay, we are now past apoapsis, as planned, because uh, I have deliberately let it go past. I could pitch up and it started going up again. So I'll flatten out more. Okay, getting ready to shut down. Should get a very circular orbit here. Okay, 250 by 232. That will do. Okay, let's see about the moon. First of all, let's check that our inclination is in fact pretty close to the moon's orbit. Okay, I think it's auto-saving there. Eh, not great. Not not a huge amount off, but you can see this is our orbit. There. Yeah, it's pretty much in line with the moon. So that's good. Now we need to get the phase angle right, or at least close. 
and then we need to burn to a home and transfer on it. So, uh, let me calculate that out again. I don't remember the phase angle off the top of my head, so let me do that again. Okay, based on the moon's position right now, I get 114.77. Now, I'm not going to get anywhere close to that because I don't have any tool to tell me what my phase angle, relative phase angle is, because I can't target the moon. So, I'm just going to have to hold a protractor to the screen, and the moon is not quite, not quite in a proper orbit, well, a circular orbit, I should say, circular, non-circular orbits are proper, but, okay, so 114.77, right, well, we're nowhere near now, um, our electric charge is going to be an issue, communications is going to be an issue, the sooner we ditch the the previous stage the better let's see let's say like this how far off are oh that's a horrible way of looking at it okay uh, but it looks like we're more like 180 than 100, uh, 115 let's say looks like Australia will be next pretty common to start burning at Australia but we'll see okay that's communication Let's see what kind of angle we've got. That looks like 120, no, 130. Okay, well, we don't need too long a time to burn. Oh, oh, that's stretching it, though. Oh, dear, we, we overdid it. It's more like 105. And we just lost connection. Crud. I should have just done it back there. We're not going to have enough electric charge. Let's just, okay, uh, let's just do a home and transfer and see how we do. So I'm just going to have orbit prograde. I'm going to turn on the thrusters and now they do turn us. Very good. Uh, check out, you know, we are using quite a lot of the nitrous oxide. You know what, I'll just do it manually. Right now, uh, fuse box gives me 52 minutes. And that's largely because of the guidance unit at the tail of this. All right, that's as good as I'm going to get it, I think. All right, let's uh, this time RCS off, throttle up. Yeah, no ignitions remaining, but that's for the next stage because I forgot that last time. Uh, set. And all right. Let's look over here to see what's going on. We won't even be able to see an intercept. We don't have patch conics unlocked. G-forces are going to get really high. It's going to be tough to shut it down at the right time. Oh great, now we can't even see our orbit. Stop that. Oh shoot, I can't show it off at all. Okay, well, it turns out I can't actually show it off ahead of time. I thought I could shut down the engines, doesn't look like it. It looks like they'll have to burn out. So I'll have to get the right amount of juice in the final stage. Okay, well, anyway, um, now we have five days worth of time. And that was what I intended. So let's see how close we get to the moon. this is our probe we should be able to do some science I mean uh, we should be able to do some science from high over the earth so let's get to that first okay we, we should be high over the earth now let's see log temperature yep high over the earth transmit data very good log, radi uh, log radiation data 
Geiger Mueller tube is recorded. Okay, go for it. Impact data, micrometeorite impacts, and finally telemetry data. Oh, we get less for the telemetry. Well, that's all right. Okay, so much science gotten. And now another thing I want to see is how well our communication holds out with just these four antennae, obviously. Technically, for the flyby mission, we don't actually need to be in contact with it, I don't think. But it'd be nice. I think we're going too fast. Normally, when you're in orbit, you'll slow down once you're out here. But as we're in a hyperbolic trajectory now, I think uh, the moon isn't going to catch up with us at all. Strange. First of all, uh, it looks like uh, we don't have as much electric charge as I thought. I thought, I mean, we've, we've only covered one day, so fuse box is totally lying to me. Um, we didn't have five days, we only had about one day. Uh, communication is good, and I think Fusebox must not be counting the, the commutrons or something. I don't know what it's not calculating. Hmm. Yeah, so that's bad. We, we definitely need more electric charge on this. Uh, second of all, uh, we're nowhere near the moon. Now we are ver going very fast. We're going one day to this orbit is excessive. It should be like three, four days. So, for a Holman transfer. Three days, three days. Maybe a little bit less than three days. So we gotta lose... That's, I, I don't think there's anything to do out here that we haven't done already. Yeah. Still high over the earth. Okay, but uh, actually this is going to end up being our very first interplanetary probe. We've just lost connection. I don't know whether that's because there's no sight on the ground or whether... Oh, it's because of electric charge. Uh, tough to say whether our... Connect, uh, well, I think our communication would definitely have extended to the moon. I think that's fair. I think it's only because of electric charge that we lost communication there. But yeah, this is heading out. So it's an interesting first step. I'll need to tune down how much delta V the top stage has. It's going to be tough to get that right. I know roughly it's 3130 that I need at the top. So we can do that. Now we could probably do that just by adding a battery. We don't we don't even need to to dump fuel. We just need to add a battery to weigh it down a little bit and that'll solve both problems. Okay, I think I'm satisfied. This is going to head out. In fact, uh, it's already on its escape trajectory. Just a little bit out of phase with with Earth. I was about to say Kerbin. All right. Let's go back to the VAB. Okay, well, we've got 42.8 signs, so maybe we should get some other technology cooking first before I mess with mess around with the rocket. Let's take a look at the tech tree quickly. So, unfortunately, they don't indicate which ones I've already got got researching. So, I've already got early probes and improved instrumentation. Now, what else do I need? This space plane stuff. We could do some more of that, but the contracts aren't particularly lucrative. Stage combustion. Well, that's obviously a very good engine for vacuum. Most of this is non-RO though. Uh, RP0, sorry. Asterisk vacuum engine. I remember somebody in the in the live streams mentioning that that was one of their favorites mainly as a replacement for the XASR but it requires basic construction 
So, uh, yeah, let's get basic construction underway. I really don't need the batteries like that, I don't think, because we have procedural batteries, hopefully. We can sneak it into a appropriate tank. These are mainly fuel tanks I don't want. And then uh, procedural fairings, and we don't really need 4 meter fairings yet. But since it's required to unlock other stuff, let's research it. And I guess we'll go with mature supersonic flight because it's bound to be required for other stuff. What about this one? Heat shields. Well, we, we will be wanting to recover stuff. Actually, that's, that's very important. So let's get the heat shields underway. Okay, it says upgrade point added. So we can distribute that. This stuff is probably going to require more than 10 units of science. So why don't I just go ahead and research mature supersonic flight too. Okay, let's see about these upgrade points. So we've got a lot of science researching at once. Looks like uh, they can only go one at a time. I seem to recall them going two at a time at some point, but oh well. Uh, they're, they're basically in the order that I want them to go in, so that's fine. Now we've got three upgrade points. Upgrading R&D sounds like a spectacular idea right now considering how slow those things are going. I don't really need to slow that up. I would really like to speed up how quickly the buildings upgrade. But let's see, uh, hold on, before I distribute the other two, let's see the effect. Okay, so 134 days on the early probes yeah that's a lot better yeah let's just uh, do R&D upgrades maybe tempting to build rockets fast faster but I haven't even started using the rush build option yet yeah let's just go for for science okay so that speeds things up a bit on that score Hopefully that'll be good. Now, let us fix up the Swift. So I'd like about four times as much battery life as I currently have. We can, let me see if we can sneak that into this tank already. Let me remove the fuels. No tech for food, water, and oxygen. Okay, that's important to know. So let's say I've got uh, 20,000, well 21,000 electric charge. We had about 7,000, so this will add uh, three times that for a total of four times that. And then let me add the mix for the XASR. Now how much delta V do we have? Not enough. But we can extend this. 33 seconds is not much burn time and we can drop the electric charge after doing so. Let's see, how about we carry just uh, 14,000, how about that? And that for the remainder. Okay, that's about right. 3,140. Let me just sum up the other stages to make sure they have enough to get to orbit. As it turns out, not quite. They have uh, 9,262. So we can't quite carry this much electric charge. Now once we get solar panels, this will be all a lot easier. But Okay, well that's 3,150 delta V on the top. Let me sum up the rest. Well, I can just subtract out. Well, I should put the fairings on. So this is not working out quite well. We've doubled our battery power, but that's not as much as I wanted. Let's get the fairings back on. 9,480. Gonna call this the Swift 1A, because I'm not even sure that the, the bottom stages can get to orbit. Should do. I mean, it should be alright, but that's a, that's a heavy should. Alright. So let's save that and whether that can actually get to the moon is another question.
I think uh, the nitrous oxide we had just about enough. I don't want to dump any nitrous oxide. I think that was about right. Okay, uh, save edits and we'll try this. Okay, let me check our contracts to see if we can't do some high over the earth science. They, they just care about the moon. They seem to have skipped the part where high over the earth was a valuable thing. Successful re-entry is a thing. We could probably modify this spacecraft to just do re-entry. Let me take a look at that. Let me see if this uh, can be fulfilled with this rocket. Well, we don't really have a heat shield right now, do we? We'd have to try re-entry without a heat shield, which uh, I think with the max temperature of all this stuff at 1073, I don't know about that. I don't think that's going to work out very well. The, we could put it in a protective shell. We could build a fairing around it. Why is it that the procedural fairing fairing bases are 1073? But these guys, Airstream Protective Shells, are 2,600. And, well, they've got a blade of shielding on them. Okay, let's purchase that one. It's only entry cost, too. So, yeah. Hold on. Well, let's have it. Uh, I don't know if it has a decoupler, and I assume it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't have its own decoupler. Okay, so we'll keep that base. Well, it's bigger, isn't it? It's too big. It could work. So we'd have RCS thrusters on this. Not RCS. Uh, well, I mean, these little attitude jets on this to deorbit it. Deorbit it. This will protect it. And we'd have parachutes. We could also use one of the other probe cores, but this is probably the best bet. But right now I don't want to remake the rocket to fit this fairing. Let's let's focus on the moon stuff and then we'll keep this in mind as a possibility. Basically right now I'm killing time until we get the early probes unlocked which will give me the solar panel and the tracking station unlocked which will give me patch conics. But uh, let's try uh, I, I don't have a full build list, I only have one thing building. And so, but let's try the Swift 1A one more time. And again, what we're changing this time is now we have a better weighted top stage with more battery power. Okay, our longitude of ascending node is completely wrong, so let's time warp till that is much better. Okay, looks like it's daylight this time. Throttle is up, SAS is on. Alright, let's see how it goes. Ignition and launch. Yep, very much not wasting any time with the pitch maneuver this time. Seems like the... okay, then that's fine. I was about to wonder about the staging, but it's, it's alright. Okay, booster set. Alright, boosters are clear. Everything's looking quite good. Now we're very tight on the whole orbital bit, so need to make sure I've got enough left over for that. But we seem to have about 400 meters per second extra on the previous launch, so that that bodes well for the whole situation. Set. Okay, I didn't really want to have ignition at the same time as fairing separation, but I'll take it. That will work. That's a weird sound to it right now, though. 
Okay, I don't see anything wrong with the numbers so far, but we'll really be able to tell once this stage is out and we switch to the third stage. Okay, going to SAS. Staging. Ignition. All right, it looks okay. We are still go for orbit. Let me take a look at our phase angle right now. Uh, we're at less than 115 degrees, that's for sure. We're sort of at about 7580 so that means we have to do a full orbit before we can or probably end up above Australia again before we can burn I don't think we can uh, try and burn at the ideal phase angle because there's just no communication there right now alright everything is looking good we'll go a little bit past apoapsis Okay, we're past apoapsis, coming up on 30 seconds left in the stage. We will have to cut it short. Okay, a 304 by 268. Still 293 meters per second left, so we could probably make the upper bit a little bit heavier, add some more electric charge in particular. Okay, well, we're not in the right location. Not at all. So let's wait around. Let's specifically wait until we're over that location in Australia. Okay. And I should have extended my supplementary antennae. Let's get those out. Okay. So I want point prograde, but I'm not going to trust Smart ASS for this. Um, I'm just going to do it myself. And we're not we're not anywhere close to where we need to be, actually. No. Maybe we can wait till Honolulu. Might be a better bet right now. We're we're more like 190 degrees off. Okay, now we have connection through Honolulu. Phase angle 180. Maybe we should have just kept burning, but it seemed like it was wrong there. The inclination might be messing with me. We're not going to have enough electric charge now, but we'll see how it goes. Tough to say, but let's let's get burning and see how close we get, to, if we can manage that. Okay, stabilize, prograde. Okay, pushing the throttle up shouldn't do anything. Okay, right. All right, let's go. Wonder why one of them has more fuel. Shouldn't do. All right, let's see where it goes. Well, a little bit too far, I think. But let's see. Let's just uh, let's just go. Let's see how close it ends up. We'll also see how the electric charge does. It's uh, we don't know our time to apoapsis is here, but here it says nine days. Power holds out through two days. Probably will hold out through three days, which would be enough. Now we're totally going to miss the moon. It'll slip right on by while we're trying to do this portion. Just a little bit too much juice. Alright, so I'll leave it there. We've got this little satellite to maybe, I don't know, do nothing because it's got no electric charge. Okay, well, uh, yep, that's about it for me. 
I think we've we've got some progress. We've made some constructive changes. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see what we can do to improve on this in the next episode. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.